So what does the future hold? So now I'd like to invite on stage some friends and colleagues here. So guys, we have um, Chris Down, the Chief Design Officer from Mattel. <laughs> We have Tommy Tallarico, the CEO and President of Intellivision Entertainment. <laughs> and then Zay Ortiz, the President and CEO of Alta Games and also co-founder of Versix Games. <laughs> so great, we'll just kind of uh, kick it off here with um, Chris, if you kind of want to give everybody a quick intro and then We'll go down the line here with each of you. Quick intro on yeah, who you are, uh, what you're doing. Sure, um, I, I, uh, I had a design and development for Mattel um, across toy categories, so I deal with toys all the time. The nature of toys is changing, and that's the reason that I'm here at CES in, on this panel, and uh, hopefully we get into some of that. Cool. Uh, my name is Tommy Tellerico. I've been uh, in the video game industry for over 30 years. And um, yeah, I, I, I hold the Guinness World Record for the person who's worked on the most video games in their lifetime. Uh, my mother's very proud. And uh, my dad's like, all those quarters we gave you growing up finally paid off. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I uh, started uh, television shows, uh, came out with the first video game soundtrack album and then started a tour called Video Games Live over 18 years ago, which holds Guinness World Records as well. And a couple years ago, I became the president and CEO of Intellivision, my uh, system growing up, which was uh, started by Mattel back in 1979. And uh, yeah, we're doing something really amazing because we're focusing around families getting together and playing together again. Yeah, and my name is Zay Ortiz, and I'm a multi-dimensional creator uh, working in the cross of cinema and gaming. Uh, my background is 20 years in film, creating from 3D visual effects from Iron Man, Mission Impossible, Tron, and so forth. And uh, I decided to really create this foundation where bringing traditional filmmaking into gaming. And uh, really that's what my vision is. And uh, I look forward to talking a little bit more about that. So Chris, you know, you've been with Mattel for a number of years, obviously Mattel being an iconic um, toy company for over 70 years of innovation. You know, you've seen a lot of technology, a lot of experiences. What helps keep Mattel kind of fresh and like experimenting with all those different tech and experiences? Yeah, I think that um, like a lot of, uh, like a lot of ways that consumers interact today, Mattel that makes toys, um, one of our towering strengths is our brands. And Barbie, American Girl, Fisher-Price, Hot Wheels, you, you, you name it, Mattel um, kind of has it inside of the portfolio. I think that um, <clears throat> that kind of recognition and the storytelling, the narrative, the characters, and kind of the expectation that consumers have around those brands is what makes them pay attention. I think the thing that has kept us relevant and, and, and even more today than ever in the history of toys um, needs to keep us relevant tomorrow is understanding how consumers are playing. And certainly from a kid point of view, when we're talking about the core kid at Mattel is between four and eight years old, um, digital is a part of play behavior. They were born with a generation alpha, generation glass was born the year the iPad came out. That's the entire range of our consumer set. So we need to stay relevant by staying relevant with how kids are playing and consuming play. Gotcha. And then Zay, from your perspective, you know, again, obviously launching St. Noir, a voice enabled game. Um, you and I had a conversation about, you know, you, Zay's daughter is the same age of Alexa, which is a short amount of time. Yes. <laughs> so voice is a new technology. So if you could share with us a little bit about, you know, your process of, of working in voice, what you've learned and your kind of experimentation yeah. process. Yeah, I mean, we, for me, I, um, since coming into film, I wasn't exposed into voice. And I felt like this was a great challenge to really figure out from someone that comes from 3D animation and cinematography, now dealing with voice, how do you program and figure out the mechanics of that, the gameplay? 
And so in six months time, we actually created a game called Saint Noir. Um, it was actually an experiment. We were working on some other stuff and, and that became the, really we started seeing some progress and seeing a way that people were having fun and a new uh, relationship with Amazon that, that unfolded. And I'm a fan of Amazon Alexa just because I have it in my household and my kids love it and my family. And what I notice is that there's a new generation coming out that are using technology that I wasn't exposed to, but they're growing up with it. Like for instance, like navigation, like my daughter would say, you know, if I would miss an exit, she goes, it's gonna reroute you, don't worry about it. You know, so <laughs> walking into, um, you know, a friend's house, she'll be like, can you play the soundtrack from Frozen? And they're like, what are you doing? And she's expecting it. She's expecting, you know, the, the technology to be around her. So I can imagine when she's older and that generation is growing up, what are they going to expect? So that's where I'm working. I'm working in that line where emerging technologies from machine learning to AI to AR, mixed reality, anything that could gamify your surroundings. I'm really engaged in that. And uh, I, I, I love it all. I love that portion, so. Just kind of experimenting what's new, how can you apply it and, and remixing it for gaming or playing, I like right? that word, remixing, yeah. Remixing all those gamification. And then Tommy, from your perspective, as you kind of shared with the group, uh, an icon coming from that video game sound. So we went from bloop, bleep, blop, 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 blop. Did I get all that right? That Pretty sound? much. That's what that was um, <laughs> so going from that kind of sound to actually creating music soundtracks and really being on the forefront of that, you know, as an innovator, can you tell us a little bit about that experience and then how that's feeding into in television? Yeah, I mean, the, the technology, when I got, first got involved in the game industry in the late 80s, um, you know, in early 90s, it was so different. Everything was on a cartridge, so you didn't have space, there was no budget, and people didn't really even care about sound. It's like, okay, the game's over now, put some sound in it. You know, we got two days. Um, and so, you know, it was our duty to kind of go in there and say, no, audio is a part of the, you know, audio visual experience. It's half of the experience. And so um, as technology changed, became CD-ROMs, became a storage mediums and DVDs and Blu-rays, you're able to store stuff on the thing, but, but games are very interactive. So we're able now to record live orchestras in many different ways. And then depending on what the player is doing, you're able to you know, play certain tracks, certain percussion, okay, turn the percussion off for this and that. So, um, and, and kids you know, expect that now, you know, whereas 30 years ago it was impossible and now it's just you know, part of kind of what you know, both these guys are saying. And, and the amazing thing about the world we live in right now is that we've never seen anything like this on the planet Earth before. You know, baby boomers were the number one generation on the planet, right? Everybody came back from World War II making whoopee, and, and the baby boomers were, you know, were, were spawned. And uh, their children... <laughs> the history lesson for today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> their children are millennials, right? Well, last year, millennials now took over. Millennials are the number one generation in the world. And as we know, a lot of millennials left home later. They found their careers later. They got married later. They're having kids later. So right now, just in the United States, there's 21 million households that have kids between the ages of two and seven years old. In Europe, there's another 21 million. And add in Canada and Mexico. So just North America in Europe, there's 65 million households that have kids between the ages of two and seven. We've never ever seen this on the planet Earth before. And that's really kind of in television's focus is not getting like to the hardcore game or that's PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, they can do all that stuff, but creating something where families can come together and play together. Because the issue with mobile, all the casual games and all the kids games and edutainment that are on mobile but mobile's very solitary. It's you focused on a, on a screen. And so what we're saying is, let's bring everybody in a room together and play these simple, affordable, 
fun games together, like people play board games. You know, the board game industry has gone up 40% every year for the last five years, right? So people want this kind of human contact, and, we're, and technology is getting us away from that, right? So that's kind of our vision and goal at Intellivision, bringing people, using technology to bring people together. Well, and I love that. And so I think that's a great segue to Chris because what you guys have done with Pictionary Air most recently, you know, if you want to tell everybody who may not know about Pictionary Air, um, what it is, but when it, why I bring it up is because to Tommy's point, it, it is a game that does get people in a room playing together, using technology in a new way and also a super affordable price point, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I, to, to build off that, it resonates a lot, Tommy, what you're talking about in terms of the, the dynamic of, of how technology plays a role today and how we might, as we become more sophisticated in understanding human behavior, evolve with it, which the social dynamic and understanding that technology can be very solitary right. is really important. And it's important as families start to realize that everybody sitting around the dinner table is staring at their phones instead of talking with each other. It's, it's, it's significant as you think about how play and entertainment actually works, um, where a lot of entertainment is linear, a lot of play through video games is directed. Open play, imaginary play, and social play is critical. And um, I think that that's part of the reason the toy industry is, is actually not seeing a depression, but actually doing very well right now. People see value in both analog and social play, as well as imagination, non-directed play. Pictionary error that Val mentioned, um, is a very simple technology, but the technology really is in service of a creating a social situation where you can, with, with the aid of a, a light pen, draw something um, in the air. You can't see what you're drawing, but the audience around you can see what you're drawing behind you. Another tech, and, and, and so it brings people together around a single focus of not the technology itself, but of the, the human behavior, the human creativity, and the play pattern behind it. And Zay, from, so from your perspective, you know, I would love for you to share a little bit more about your background coming from film. You, know, you touched on your experience with Iron Man. And so for those of you who don't know, and I'm sure most of the people in the room have probably seen Iron Man, um, but Jarvis in Iron Man is what Zay's created with the team. I contributed to, yes. Um, and so coming from that really um, cinematic, you know, film background and that really visual background, you know, how has that built and kind of evolved in how you're applying it to, to gaming or gamifying tech? Better. Oh, film, film was my canvas. That was my canvas to experiment. And right now, bringing a lot of that now into this world is important <laughs> since, you know, seeing how technology has evolved and now we have the means to do it. Um, so as a creator, I'm creating things and experimenting to start to make these things a reality and helping with you know, other companies and within my own company to do that. Uh, one of the biggest things for us is that we want to create games that are more social in a way where you could uh, collaborate. So something like how St. Noir is, is where what we decided to do is really figure out how do we use a tech that, you know, 100 million people have in their household and use that with traditional board games that has been exploding and combine those two and, and see what the result is. And we did and we had fun doing it and now, you know, on to different things and experimenting with new stuff. Like one of my passions is now, you know, working with voice. Now I want to work with uh, video and graphics again and combine those two. So if it's the means with AR, mixed reality with voice and combining that, kind of like Jarvis, or in the means of using cinema on your TV and using that to mix the reality with voice. So to control, basically you become the director of your movie. So for us, we are so used to working with directors to direct your um, surroundings and you are passive and now you would be active and be able to control, go through the left door, go through the right door. And this is all done by AI and machine learning. So those are, those are things we are tackling. And then kind of building on the entertainment theme, um, Chris, if there's any, you know, would love to hear your perspective on you know, how Mattel, there's obviously a lot, a lot of uh, Barbie film coming out and Masters of the Universe and all of that coming out. Um, 
how are you guys kind of approaching the, are there any kind of integration with the toy experiences? You know, is that connected? What can we sort of expect from an entertainment and toy fusion, I guess? Yeah, I mean, so the, uh, you know, the, the idea that there's value behind stories that people are familiar with, brands that people can connect to, um, does create the opportunity in a company like Mattel to say, okay, well, we have Barbie. It's an amazing toy brand. What movie, what short form content are we going to do? What are we going to do on YouTube? What are we going to do in video game and everything? So one of the tensions, of course, as you begin to exploit or expand across where consumers are playing is how do you tie it together in a meaningful way? And it's, it's a complicated question without a very elegant answer sometimes, but you, it does have to be considered. Part of what makes it complicated is you're satisfying a range of demographics sometimes. You have everybody from the Barbie collector that could be 50 years old all the way down to the brand new entrant that might be getting her first Barbie doll um, at age two or age three. And then kind of the, the consumer in, in the middle. How are you tying it together so it's a narrative that makes sense, mm -hmm. it's right for the consumer that it's appealing to based on the platform that it's being executed on, um, but doesn't try to overcomplicate the whole message so you dilute any individual execution that you're doing. So it's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. And I will say from a Mattel point of view, um, it is one that we're taking very seriously. I mean, we believe that our greatest value in the future is not gonna be about how we're embracing technology necessarily today or any new platform or, or whatever the trend happens to be, but it's how we are shepherding our brands into the future in a way that makes them relevant to consumers at the right time. So it's, it's, it's a challenge is the short answer. And, and it sounds like what you guys are doing is just being really mindful of how exploring how you can extend those stories, right? The stories and play in the right way. That's right. Um, a, lot of, a lot of things of what I've seen in the industry is, is oftentimes from a, like just from a pure consumer perspective, you know, you can have like the mobile game experience and then you might go to like the void and have an experience there and watch the film and everything else. And it's like, really the only common thread is the characters. There's not that kind of cohesion of story. So um, it is a challenge. And uh, I am excited because I feel like that to me, that's the next sort of design challenge, right? Is, is how we hop in and out of those stories in a meaningful way where they don't feel so segmented. Um, so Tommy, from your perspective, uh, Amico, would love for you to share about Amico to the audience here, because obviously it's about getting families back together, but tell, tell everybody why it's so consumer friendly and what we can expect. Yeah, Amico, I mean, Amico is the Italian word for friend, so that's why we, uh, we called it that. Me and Val, yep. what's up? <laughs> okay, um, so, so um, yeah, the, the, the console, it, it comes with two controllers, and uh, the controllers actually have a touch screen on the controller, and it has a gyroscope and an accelerometer and a speaker and a microphone and force feedback and wireless charging. It, it goes, this is one of the controllers, it goes onto, uh, onto the console, it fits into the base. Um, it also has RFID built into the whole system. So I could take my controller, I could go over Chris's house, tap it on his machine, and not only does it connect, but now we can play all my games on his system, which is kind of cool. Oh, the other thing too, sorry, <laughs> one big thing. You can also connect up to eight mobile devices to it as well. So, so because everybody has Excellent. one of these, so we, even though it comes with two controllers, you download a free app, connects to the device, and now eight people can play right out of the box. And the system comes with five games on it as well. Too. So, Zay, you know, really have kind of painted what the future looks like in your work. And obviously doing that too through your work in St. Noir, what are some of the kind of core areas, you know, that you're sort of like right now to paint the future, whether it be visual or experiential, what are some of the things that, we can, that you're kind of working on? Yeah, it's, it's really about going a little bit deeper from where we left off. And how we're going about that is really how do we get into deeper in machine learning to actually navigate stories? So a lot of people that work at the company are storytellers and we're really figuring out how do we create real branching narrative? We have a base, we've figured out branching narrative in a way where we could figure out the algorithms, but we want to go deeper in that spectrum to really now, 
how do I take a story from one element and now bring it to your TV and bring it to your mobile, bring it to a device that you carry or maybe an iPad or something that you already have in your household. And it could be a smart speaker, it could be anything like that. So we're transporting that and figuring out, okay, now cars and autonomous cars are gonna be cool. Well, what about painting things on the walls and windows and all that? So we're experimenting with everything that's beyond that maybe it's three, four years from now, but we wanna explore it now to really be ahead of the curve. And how I see it is that we need to really figure out for everybody and everyone that's involved to really bring entertainment to the next level. So um, for me, I think entertainment is such a big part of life and I don't wanna just sit back and watch something anymore. I want it to be around me and I wanna be able to control it and be able to kind of move with it when I need to. So that's what we're kind of tackling right now and being able to change those avatars and decision making and problem solving. So we're, we're tackling all those experimental and uh, possibilities. And I like what you said, because it's not just about the device, it's about the experience around you. So you could be in a, a place yes. and kind of choose, I mean, choose your own adventure. I think that's kind of language that everybody um, knows. And I, I love that that's what you guys are doing with Branching Narrative, that it's not just in voice and it's not just um, on the Correct. screen, but like really, you know, how can you have this incredible storyline or characters and really kind of have someone experience it in different ways. Yeah, it'll, it'll give opportunities for larger IPs to connect into that ecosystem. And I just think that it's a, it's a great way to also create your own characters and your own stories. Um, you know, imagination is so powerful that it would be so beautiful to see the next generation create their own stories and their own imaginations from something like this. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And um, it would, I, I think it'd be, int I mean, all the people here, it seems like, you know, everybody should be working together. You're all doing interesting Hell yeah. things. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> um, but no, uh, thank you guys so much for sharing your perspective. I think we're almost out of time. I'd like to ask just one quick question to each of you. Of course, this is a question of, you know, how do you see the future? What's sort of like the right now and what's happening next? Just real quick from your point of view. Uh, well, I, that is a tough. I mean, that's that's a tough question. I think that um, what is important and and where you look at brands and companies that have stood the test of time, they pay attention to consumer behavior and while being predictive about what the future might hold from a tech point of view, play behavior point of view, cultural point of view, um, it's it's critical that you listen first to your consumers. Um, we we as as companies that have to make money tend to listen to our retail customers very often mm -hmm. and lose sight of our consumer. Um, and uh, I think that it's critical in the companies that have stood the test of time, listen first to their consumer. Yeah, and, and, and likewise with us, you know, my two biggest goals that I always tell everybody is with the, in regards to the consumer, we want to build value and trust. Those are our two main things. And, and again, in, in this world where everyone wants to get you on subscription now and everyone wants to get your credit card to get those new tokens and there's loot boxes and there's all these ways that people are just trying to, you know, grab from you. And, and we don't allow any of that, you know, stuff on there. So we really, you know, our, our mission is to, you know, look at this from a completely different point of view where we're building trust and, and providing value to our customers. For us, we want, the, we want people to control their experience and decide on it. So I think that's the strong point for us is, you know, building something that someone could actually have the opportunity to do whatever they want with it and not be beholden with uh, a structure. And um, you know, everything is in an alt exploration to, to that like universe. So um, we're, we're excited about all that. So thank you. Well, yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Um, we'll be in the back of the room if you want to have, excuse me, have any Q&A or anything like that afterwards. So thank you all for joining us and thank you for everyone in the room. Thank you so much. Thank you.